it's time for our regular what's new from Hermes update. But instead of looking far ahead into the future, I thought it might be fun for us to look at some new pieces that are in stores now or should be very, very soon. So if you're planning a trip to your local Hermes boutique, you have an idea for what to expect or what are the things that you could ask for. I'm going to jump straight into it because we have a lot of pieces to get through. So if you'd like to hear my thoughts on the latest and greatest Hermes launches that I would suggest looking at, or maybe even buying in the coming month, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on marching. As much as I would love to be, I am far from being concise. Even when I try to be a little bit more to the point, we still end up with videos that are like over an hour long that then I have to edit down to being a little bit more of a digestible length. So what I did here is I picked my top 10 favorite pieces that, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily consider all of these for myself, but I think there is someone out there who would appreciate these pieces. And I think these are great pieces to know about for one reason or another. And I'm going to be going in no particular order. I just picked 10 pieces that I wanted you to be aware of, pieces that I think you would really enjoy or some people out there would really enjoy. And even if they are not your cup of tea, I think there is still something about these pieces that you could appreciate at least the idea of. So the first thing that I have here is actually a runway piece. It's something that I myself looked at on the runway and I was really intrigued by it. It's not something that I asked for or I pre-ordered, but I knew that if it makes it into stores, it's something that I would love to try on. I don't think that my boutique is going to be getting it because it is kind of an acquired taste. And for this price, I would definitely not buy it for myself, but it is a new take on the Andy belt. Now the Andy belt is not a new design. It's something that has been around for, I want to say a couple of years at least. It's technically part of the men's range, but I don't think there's anything about this belt that would make it men specific. I think you should buy whatever you like, whatever brings you joy, and most importantly, whatever fits your proportions. But what I love about this belt is that it's 26 millimeters, which means that it's a really flattering width on most people. Most men's belts tend to be 34 millimeters and up from there, which to me is just a little bit more. To me, that length or that width, I should say, is a little bit too wide and overwhelming, but 26 millimeters, I think, is a perfect compromise. And the belt buckle itself, it's not one of the RMS belt kits, which means that you cannot actually remove the belt buckle. It comes as a set belt in different length. And the belt buckle is actually inspired by, very loosely, by the sangles of the Kelly and Birkin bags. But it's done in a more geometric, boxy, and contemporary shape, which I really appreciate. So if you're not familiar with Hermes and their iconography, it's not something that you would ever look at and think that it was inspired by a bag. I really appreciate this more minimalistic and more robust take and inspiration of the Hermes Sangle. Well, for this current season, usually this belt comes in either Swift, and I have also seen it in Berenia. It starts at just around, I think, seven or 800 euros, but for this current season, they are doing it in a bad boy take. It's literally called the Andy Bad Boy Belt, and it features this really thick, chunky, robust chain detail, which is of course removable. Now I, as I mentioned, it is a belt that I would have considered until I found out the price because that chain detail makes this belt over $3,000, which to me is just insane considering that you could buy this very same belt without the chain detail for I think less than a third of the price like maybe a fourth of the price. I'm not good with numbers, but at a fourth of the price, which is just insane. But anyway, if you're an Hermes collector, if you love a piece that has more of a punk rock, rock and roll feel to it, this is something that you might want to look at. I still don't think that it's worth over 3000 euros, but it is definitely quite a special piece. And I love the fact that you can remove the chain. And if I bought this belt, I would actually use that chain not only as part of the belt, but I could also see myself putting this on a bag as a back charm. 
I love the idea. I love that really thick, chunky chain detail. I'm sure it's going to be beautifully made, but for this kind of money, it's not something that's going on my wish list. By the way, this belt is made of Swift. Of course, it's far from being the most expensive RMS belt out there, but usually belts in this price range are made of exotic skin. This belt isn't. The only reason it's so expensive is because of that removable chain, which as fun as it is, personally, it's not something that I could justify buying, but if it's something that would be right up your alley and you could see yourself taking advantage of, this is out now. Speaking of new iterations of classic pieces, we have a new take on the Calvi Duo wallets. So if you're not familiar with the Calvi Duo wallets, they came out, I want to say, it's been quite a few years at this point, but of course they are a fun new take on the original Calvi. The Calvi card holders have been around for I would guess decades. They are a really simple card holder or a little bag organizer, depending on what you want to use it for. The coffees are made of one single sheet of leather that are folded like a piece of origami in the shape of a card holder, but they don't actually have any card slots. They are basically just two large little pockets that you can stack cards into. And then a few years ago, they came out with the Calvi Duo, where on one side you have the original Calvi pocket but then on the other you do have a little sort of what's well, an actual pocket it's something that comes with a snap closure that you can put coins into or you can put things that you don't want to be without which a lot of people appreciated the idea of because it made the coffee a little bit more secure so if you open it nothing will slide out now there are there have been i should say a few fun seasonal takes on the Calvi Duo. The latest one is the so-called Le Mustang print, which comes in two different colors in either Blanc, which is a really special color for MS to do. Blanc is pure white. It's very rare for MS to do something in pure white. They have a ton of different shades of ivory, off-white and cream, but for them to do something in pure white at this point is really rare. But we are going to see this color around with the introduction of a new white, but Blanc is the original white color. And then we are also getting this in Celeste. So if you love the coffee and you love something that feels a little bit more quirky and fun, this is a new print. It's quite rare for RMS to do such a literal print. They tend to be a little bit more abstract, but if you love country, everyone seems to be all about country music these days. So this is definitely very much on trend. And if you're into the whole country idea, this is a piece that you definitely want to put on your radar. I don't think it's worth the upcharge. It's not my personal favorite, but it's out and around. So if you are a coffee fan and you love horses and this whole Western aesthetic, this can be yours now. I told you guys that we we're going in no particular order because we're going from something Western inspired to something that reminds me more of that sort of Gatsby aesthetic. I don't think there's anything 1920s about these pieces, but that's the first thing that came to mind, which is a new take on the Olympia earrings. I think the official name is the Olymp earrings, but that sounds so weird for me to say. So I'm just going to say the Olympia earrings and bracelets, which are of course inspired by the brand's icon, the H, which I do have an entire video discussing my least favorite H inspired pieces. These I did not include in that video because it's not my favorite range, but it's not something I have anything against. In fact, I actually quite like this new take because we are getting a new take on the Olympia range. We are getting the large hoop earrings as well as the bangle decorated with feathers. I think they are Meribu feathers. So it's some sort of an ostrich-like bird, I assume. I'm not exactly sure about their biology, but that's kind of what they remind me of. When I, when I first saw the press pictures of these, they were really, really tiny. And I actually thought that they might be done with mink because RMS does have a handful of mink pieces. They have even done the orange sandals in mink, which I really like the look of, but now I know that they are actually done with feathers, which makes more sense considering that they are a spring summer launch. So if you are a fan of a large, show-stopping head-turning piece, but something that is also a little bit soft and more feminine. These are going to be available really, really soon. And since I have just mentioned the Orans, of course, there are some new Orans, which we have already looked at, but here I wanted to share with you the newest stakes on the sheep. I am personally not a big fan of the sheep, but 
I know I'm in the minority here because they are an extremely popular and hyped piece. I personally don't think that they're any better than a pair of flip flops, but I know many people will, would disagree. You know, it's your money. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But when it comes to the sheep, they are being introduced in exotic leathers. Now, this is not the first season that we're getting them in exotic leathers. They have been doing them for a couple of years, but this season we are getting them in a ton of new finishes. My favorite is the new lizard sheep, which they are doing in the classic ombre finish, actually mixed with black. So they have a little bit of sort of a color blocking look to them. So if you're a fan of the sheep, now you can pick it up in lizard, although it's going to cost you because the sheep in lizard are just under $4,000. But if you want to take things even further, Hermes has been doing the sheep in alligator for a couple of years. And some of the newest colors that they are doing for spring, summer are, I think they're doing it in a shade of brown. It's not gold. It's some shade of brown. And then the other one is rose porcelain, which is a newer exotic color that will set you back $6,700. But if you love your exotics, if you love your sheep, you can definitely check these out. And while we are on the topic of shoes, there are quite a few shoes that are inspired by the Faubourg iconography. In case you didn't know this, Hermes each and every single year will choose an overarching theme that influences everything that they do from actual designs through their window displays all the way to the ribbons that they use to tie around their boxes. And this year is all about celebrating the Faborg Boutique, the Hermes Mothership, which does have quite a few little mascots and details that is woven into the heritage of the brand. So there are quite a few shoes that celebrate the Faborg Boutique. One of the newest ones that they are launching for spring summer is the so-called Innocent Sneakers, which are a really simple, casual, stripped down look that they're doing for men. And the reason I wanted to mention these is because these are being offered in denim. We have talked about this in a previous What's New from Hermes, but denim is a huge trend this season. They're not only doing bags like the shoulder Birkin in denim, but also belts and shoes. They're even doing the sheep, the Oren in denim, which I really like because I, you know, I think there is something about picking up a really classic piece in a unique finish that will completely transform an outfit and even your wardrobe. I think infusing different textures into your outfit can really enrich your collection. So I do love a denim piece, long story short, and they are doing these innocent sneakers in denim with a ton of the Faubourg inspired patches, which is really quite quirky and even childish. It's not my favorite. I think this should be part of the baby line not the actual mass collection. But if you love something that is just really fun and playful, they are doing these for spring, summer. Personally, if you asked me for a more casual fun shoe recommendation for spring, summer, I would point you in the direction of the trip espadrilles from Hermes, which is a classic style they've been doing for years. They're actually made in Spain. A lot of people think that everything that Hermes does is made in France, which a lot of it is. They have a ton of different workshops in France, but Hermes does try to go to the best of the best when it comes to their production. So if espadrilles are not, if the best espadrilles don't come from France, they will try to find the best resource to source their espadrilles. It's something that they've been doing for many years. They continue offering them every single spring, summer in a ton of different finishes. Now, one thing that I would say about these is that they are handmade. So it doesn't matter if you already own these shoes, you have to try them in every single leather, in every single color, in every single finish because sizes can vary. But I do think that these are the kind of shoes that you would have in your collection for a really long time. So if you're looking for a pair of summer shoes that are casual, that are laid back and easy, effortless, but still look refined and sophisticated, I think the Trip Espadrilles would be a much better choice. And with that, let's move on to bags. The first bag is something that we have already talked about in a previous What's New from Hermes video of mine, which is the so-called Kelly to go Tressage. So this is a new take on the Kelly to go line, which is something that Hermes has been playing around with. So of course, these bags are very closely inspired by the original Kelly wallets, which they are basically Hermes's take on a wallet on chain. 
but for the past couple of seasons they have been playing around with the kelly to go and they've been offering it with different more ornate more unique straps so we've seen them do the kelly to go with a rock inspired strap and then for this current season they are doing it in a trussage finish now if you're a long time hermes fan the term trussage is something that you might have heard of but even if you haven't heard the term itself you have definitely seen a trussage bags around the first trussage collection that I can recall, I think those Birkins were launched in 2018. They were called the Trissage Birkin. They were available in two different sizes, in size 30 and 35 in three different colors, I believe. They came in gold, blue electric, and a shade of red. Was it Rouge Decor? Don't quote me on it, but I remember it came in gold, blue electric, and a shade of red in size 30 and 35. It was a limited edition range of Birkin bags that on the front featured this really unique sort of braided or woven leather detail. It wasn't my favorite, but they were incredibly popular and they were a highly exclusive and limited launch. They were kind of reminiscent of the Birkin flag, which I personally would have preferred. Anyway, I digress. The Birkin Trissage range was the first range that we saw with these woven details. Then those bags later inspired a range of picatins where the handles of the picatin were finished with a similar braided touch. And then for this current season, we are getting, and in my opinion, much more elaborate take on the Trissage collection with the Kelly to go Trissage, which is available in a few different colors. I've seen it in new blue jean with a yellow Trissage, so a yellow sort of woven detail. I've seen it in word yucca, which was a new color for last season and also in gold. So you definitely have a handful of colors to choose from, from more vibrant colors through more neutrals all the way to Hermes Classics. To me, new blue jean is a neutral. I know it sounds weird because it is a shade of blue, but as the name suggests, it is inspired by denim. And to me, denim is a classic staple, almost neutral shade. If you've seen my recent vlogs, you'll know all about my hunt for the perfect summer beach slash holiday bag. I really don't have a beach appropriate bag in my collection because I'm not usually a beachy person, but I am going on more of a beachy holiday really really soon so I have been looking for a more summery bag and something I have been there is something I have been considering which in the past I was very much against I mean to be honest I was against this bag being carried on a daily basis just because I don't think it looks really refined and elegant being carried as an oversized tote but I think as a beach bag or as a picnic bag which is what it's what it was meant for I do think that there is a time and a place for it, which is the garden party. Now, if I bought a garden party, I would buy it in the larger size, not in the larger size, which is the garden party voyage, which measures 49 centimeters, but I would probably have to pick it up in a size 36, and then it also comes in size 30. So if I bought this bag, I would probably buy it for as sort of a summer holiday bag in size 36 in the original white canvas finish with a darker leather trim and darker leather details and I would consider buying this back pre-loved so that would make this my first pre-loved bag but I don't think I'm going to have time to do it before I leave on my trip which is coming up in a few days anyway if you are a fan of the garden party it is available in two new finishes for spring summer they are doing it in the Hermes electric finish which is actually inspired by a scarf print that's been around for years i believe it or not on that original scarf which i picked up in vegas i saw it on display and i thought that it was the perfect souvenir to bring home from vegas because i felt it was really vegas appropriate it's basically inspired by this large neon lights no i don't think they're neon actually i think they're inspired by like vintage theater lights so it was a scarf print at one point which is now being translated into a back print and we are going to be getting quite a few new printed garden party bags this is the first one that we're seeing in size 36 it is available in a handful of different colors but it's definitely not for those who are looking for something more subtle and understated they're really fun quirky and eye-catching 
as is the scarf, but it's available in size 36. And then the Voyage size, which we have been seeing on the runway, is available now. I think it's called the Teddy Ash print, which features a more abstract, but still really cute and quirky bear sort of character. To me, it is a little bit too quirky for Hermes, but as you know, Hermes does have a more playful side to them. Now, we are getting quite a few new prints on the large garden party. I think there should be an equestrian inspired print launching later this season. And then we're also getting another scarf inspired print, but something that is a little bit more bold and masculine for, for winter 2024, but the Teddy Ush is one of the very first ones that we have seen on the large garden party voyage. But if you love the smaller garden party, now it can be yours with the Hermes electric print, which is really vibrant, really show-stepping and definitely summer appropriate, as long as it fits your aesthetic. And before I let you go, I do want to introduce you to the latest watch launch from Hermes, which has been highly anticipated. I do think that Hermes will try to turn this into their own sort of date just, not really in terms of the way it looks and how it, what it will add to your collection. I personally would never mention Hermes on the same page with Rolex, especially not when it comes to the investment value of these pieces. Now, obviously, do take my watch reviews with a grain of salt because I don't know too much about watches. All I know is that I would personally not spend my hard-earned money on Hermes watches, even though they are really proud of the fact that they produce their own mechanisms in-house in Switzerland. So they, in theory, should be considered a serious timepiece maker, but just because I know how Hermes watches hold their value on the pre-loved market, it's not a Mete from Hermes that I personally feel comfortable spending my own money on. I would much rather put my money towards a Rolex or an actual Patek, but there is something Patek slash Rolex adjacent about these watches for me. It's almost like it borrows inspiration from the Datejust and what is that Patek watch called that everyone is going crazy for? The one that comes with the rubber band. Is it called Aqua? Aqua something. I can't remember the exact name, but I put a picture of it up here. I don't think it's a direct replica of either one of those watches, but it does kind of remind me of those two watches. And if those had a baby, kind of a clumsy baby, that's what this watch reminds me of. But it is definitely a more simple, more casual, more sporty watch than the ones that we have grown accustomed to seeing from Hermes, because of course you're going to be familiar with their H watches, even their Kelly watches, but this is a completely different game. But I think the idea is that Hermes would love to have every single one of their more serious clients get one of these watches, which I do understand why that is. I think it is a simple, basic watch that everyone could take advantage of as long as you do enjoy wearing watches, but I don't think there's anything too, you know, it's just kind of bland and dull. It's not going to be too disruptive, but because of that, it's going to go with anything and everything, but not because it will add anything to an outfit, but because it will not take anything away from it. Personally, it's just not my favorite design. To me, it's just missing some spice. The shape itself is kind of boring. The face of the watch is lackluster. so. There's something missing to me, but again, I am not a big watch person here. Anyway, they do their own movements. They are produced in Switzerland. They, it is only available in one size currently, in size 36, but they call this the large watch, which leads me to believe that it's going to be available in several different sizes at one point. Currently, the watch case is available in either stainless steel without diamonds or in stainless steel with a diamond bezel, which I think also makes the, there. I think they add a little bit of gold onto the case, but the entire case itself is not made of solid gold. So it is a more sporty watch. So the base is also going to be stainless steel and you can choose from a rubber band or they also offer this watch with a full on stainless steel bracelet or in two tone with a little bit of gold on the chain itself. And it ranges between $6,700 and 
thousand dollars so it's definitely up there in price and for me that is just way too much money to spend on an Hermes watch unless you love the aesthetic if you do this watch is out now but to me there's just something there's really just something missing I cannot put my finger on what it is but there's just something it just looks like a swatch watch which there is nothing wrong with swatch but it's not a watch brand that you would spend you know somewhere between six to twenty two thousand dollars on i feel like for the aesthetic for the look and what it will add to your collection it is just way too overpriced which i think goes for the entire hermes watch range but that is just my personal opinion i cannot wait to hear your thoughts on not only these new watches but also everything that we have discussed in today's video i cannot wait to hear your thoughts on some of the newest rms launches and if there's anything else that i didn't mention in today's video but you would like to get my thoughts on make sure to leave them in the comment section down below and while you're down there give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet i really appreciate you being here and watching and i will see you back here with I think the next video you will see from me is going to be a fine jewelry video. So if you're interested in my thoughts on the latest fine jewelry launches, don't forget to come back. But just know that I really appreciate you being here and watching and I'll see you back here really, really soon.